Welcome everybody. Dzień dobry. A small Polish from me. So, <laughs> I, I actually worked for five years in Poland and picked up very small amount of Polish, so I should have learned a lot more than a few words. But one thing I did learn in, in my time working in Poland is how much you guys love music. I did a lot of live playing here, not just, you maybe have heard me play with um, Ben Daglish and Andrew Barnabas and stuff at these parties, and we got another party tonight, which I hope everyone comes to. But I did a lot of playing in pubs and bars with different friends and other people. I was working in Bydgoszcz for quite a long time, so in Bydgoszcz and Torun and other places. Um, I think maybe we should wait for this to clear a little bit before we start the main talk. So I'll just do a bit of a, because it's noise, which I can hear. So I'm just going to do a bit of a, a preamble first. So Sensible Software was set up in 1986. But actually, my friend uh, Chris Yates, who I set the company up with, we played in a band together long before Sensible Software ever existed. Uh, we started playing music in, I think it was 1982 or something like this together, when we were 16-year-old uh, school kids in the same maths class. And uh, we were in a band together, various different bands, for three years before we even started making games. So. If we'd have had our way, maybe we'd be making music rather than games. But as everyone knows, it's quite hard to make money from making music. And at least in those days, as aspiring new game makers, we found it quite easy and successful. We've got Charles here and Noirid and some of us people have been around a long time and some of the other people in the room as well. Uh, those exciting days. Petro, he's been around longer than all of us, I think, in this industry. So we, um, you know, we, we had an exciting industry then. And that was why we went to mus uh, games rather than music. Nevertheless, music has always been a big love. And what you're going to see now in this talk is the history of how the music changed in the sensible games and how our love of making music was always there. And as the machinery changed, like the machines changed over the years, so we were able to do more and more and more with the music. So we're going to start off. Um, I, need to, I haven't got a clicker, so I need to ask Patrick and Daniel around the corner. So can we click onto the next slide, please? OK, so. Who remembers Parallax on the Commodore 64? Anyone? OK. So we're in 1986 here. Myself and Chris made our first game of sensible software, Parallax. We went up to Ocean Software in Manchester. They were the biggest publisher in the UK at the time. And uh, there was a guy called uh, Martin Galway, who was their resident musician. Martin was an 18-year-old kid at this time making amazing classic ocean loader tunes and Rambo and Comic Bakery. And one day they sat down and showed us, they said, we've got this young kid and he's made some music. Do you think it's any good? And I remember the, the hairs standing on the back of my neck. It was amazing. Bearing in mind we're talking to Commodore 64 here. So if we can play, we're going to have a series of music videos in this talk and I'm going to do a lot of sitting down, okay? So you're going to see some videos of the game and then a couple of other bits which kind of capture that time. Then I'll talk again. So next video, please. Thank you. 
Okay, we can just go back to the previous slide. So, this is kind of what we're going to be doing in this talk, okay? Going back and then talking. So, a little recap. Martin was a genius on the Commodore 64. Uh, Rob, I don't know if he's here. Rob, are you here? Rob's in the building. Rob Hubbard, another brilliant musician of the era, and many others as well. And um, we were very lucky that he made that amazing piece of music coming out of a tiny machine, you know? Martin at the time was really into Tangerine Dream and these kind of bands. And you can see at the end, now we're playing this kind of music live. This is with Sid 80s. This was uh, from a gig in Brighton two years ago. So myself and Ben Daglish, another really good old computer games uh, music guy. Uh, Mike, Mark Knight, who works at Codemasters, doing sound for them. Uh, and uh, a couple of other guys, Marcel Donne, uh, Andreas Wallström on drums, and Jeremy Longley on bass. We're all games industry people. But it's taking computer game music, in other words, a vision that Martin had, and bringing it to live on a stage. And for me, it's a lot of fun to play from my first game of piece of music live on stage in front of people, which is great. Um, so what we're going to do is now we're going to jump forward to the next game. So can we go forward to the next game, please? Whizball, okay. So the next thing we did after um, Parallax, stupidly, because we got very little royalties, if none, was sign our next game also with Ocean called Whizball. And again, Martin did the music. And what you're going to see now is not just Whizball, but we're trying to capture that time with a few games from that era in the Commodore 64 era of uh, Sensible. So if we can run with the next video, that would be great, please. Software, it puts all the soccer games to shame. It's got an overhead view, we really test your skill. You're in the World Cup final, can you be Brazil? You try the very best, when you do 17 nil. Snap off a copy today. I love WizKid. Thank you. So what's been really nice whilst I've been putting these videos together with my friend Anthony Caulfield, who's uh, one of the guys who made Bedroom to Billions, and he, he helped me edit this together, is when you put all the things together back to back, it's really fun and you go through the music really fast and you capture this era. So all this pre-digital era of making music, because these are all pre-digital tunes you've heard, we were still making some really good interesting music. You can hear we started off with Whizball, 
and uh, the, again, uh, classic Martin Sidchip sound. We then went to the kind of cheesy micro pro soccer um, tune. Then actually a stupid promotional tune that I wrote for micro pro soccer for an ECTS show in the UK when we were trying to promote the game, which was performing live with Ben Daglish on stage. Uh, we'll be playing that song and 11 others, by the way, in quite a rocky outfit we've got to play tonight here on this stage at the after party. So please come to the after party. So we then move forward through uh, tunes like Megalomania and the TV theme from tennis. So we started to get licensing tunes in coming in there with a TV thing, the BBC TV theme for tennis for our tennis game. And then we have uh, Sensible Soccer, which actually has got a funny story about music. Um, Captain Sensible from The Damned, the, the, the punk band, actually approached us to write a tune for Sensible Soccer. And the initial Sensible Soccer release had his, his music on it. What he didn't tell us, because he said he wanted a pint of beer as a contract, was that he didn't have the licensing rights. And actually, we got a follow-up letter from his publishing company, and we had to pay £10,000 to not have a licensed tune. It's a lesson to learn. I've never done it since. And that was a main reason for putting in loads of my own music in games after that, to make sure that there was no legal problems. And so you hear a uh, funny little ditty that Richard Joseph did. And you also saw there Richard Joseph. So we were very lucky at Sensible. We went from one of the genius Commodore 64 musicians in Martin to one of the genius Amiga ones in Richard Joseph, which was great for us. And so we're working with Richard on Megalomania, on 3D tennis, and... Uh, and then, of course, finishing up with the amazing Whiskid tune. I don't think uh, either myself or Richard can claim any writing credits on that tune. But um, it just goes to show that classical music has also got a really good place in some games as well. And the, the kind of humor you can get from music. So let's go forward to the next one, please. <coughs> okay. I think we're about to go cannon fodder. So before we play it, just let me talk through this. So we'd had sensible soccer, we'd had a legal problem. So I thought, right, I said to Richard, right, I've got some tunes I'm writing, let's just work with my tunes. So I hadn't really up to this point put my own music into the games at all, even though I've always been a musician. So the idea was, I came up with this funny little reggae bass line and chords and a few words, just a, literally a few ideas. Took it to Richard, drove to his house. It was about 150 kilometers from my house, say. And uh, he put it up running on his machine. Then he said, OK, we can just arrange this here, add some trumpets here, we do this here, some keyboard. And suddenly it sounded great. And as it's turned out, this has become our most famous tune. You know this kind of tune. So, but then to add to that, we had these machines with more capacity, like the CD32, for example. And how were we going to fill the space? So he said, let's make a video. It won't go in all of the versions. But on the bigger versions, we can do a video. So we went out. It was a great day out for us. We had a team, a core team of about six and two or three other guys. So we spent a day out. We bought some military uniforms. We hired this vehicle here. Cost us 80 pounds plus the driver for the day. Very good. We, we found a field uh, nearby with poppies in it. And I asked the old lady who owned the field, could we use your field for the day, please? She said yes. And uh, we bought these silly military uniforms, a few guns, and made and made this video. So we can run the next video, please. think you guys know this tune. We'll be playing it tonight, so please come back and listen to us. So having done this tune and having this amazing response from people, not just from the video, but from the music itself, because this is one of the first tunes in a computer game to have singing in it. This is only because Richard was such a forward-thinking genius, we could use his technical knowledge and musical knowledge to make this happen. 
So once we cottoned on to this idea, we started to like go a bit crazy on making these crazy style videos. So now you're going to see what happened next. Like every game became an excuse to have one day out of the office to make a stupid video to put on the, um, on the game. And myself and Richard kept on writing the music. So we can go to the next game, please. Oh, oh, we're still in cannon fodder. Sorry, I apologize. I'm jumping ahead of myself. So something else we did with cannon fodder. Um, we had this hill, big empty hill like it is now, right? And we were thinking, what can we do to fill this boring space? Because we were focused on these little guys queuing up to go to war at the bottom. So we decided this idea that our soldiers, every time one died, they all had names. We would um, stick their graves up on the hill so we can see who's died. And we had this big rolling list of credits showing who died and you had to watch. It was very sad. The, the few that survived got medals and ranked up and the rest of the guys, we had this, this list. So we needed some music to be sad, okay? Now, I'd written this song when I was 18. I'd split up with a girl girlfriend, or rather she split up with me and gone with my, my friend, my, my best friend at the time, actually. So I was very sad and I wrote a sad love song, mournful one. So we just took the song and literally took the words out and that was this kind of for the hill thing, this mournful theme everyone remembers. But of course, luckily enough for me these days, at events like this, I can come back and play the proper tune again uh, with, with real singing. And what's more, a friend of mine who ran a recording studio in London, uh, Virgin, kindly offered to do, give us some money to do a, record a good version of this to promote the game. And he knew a guy called Ian Ritchie, who's actually the saxophone player who's currently on tour with Roger Waters. So we managed to get this guy for 50 pounds, believe it or not, to do the best piece of musicianship I've ever had on any piece of music I've ever made, which became this theme. So if we can run the next video, please. Okay, so what I like about this video that you saw is that was made by a fan. And it was a fan who made the connection about people really dying in war and the music. And suddenly we've got a piece of music written as a love song turned into a song for a game about people dying in war. And now you've got like people out there making videos that go with the music. And he took his time to find images of different, this, this is a short version of it, but different people dying in war and injured people and very much reflecting on what the the song turned into. So to me this is really special, this, that someone else did this, took my music and made it something else. So it's really cool. Okay, next game please. Okay, so now we move on to Sensible World of Soccer. So for us, this was like um, our best selling game, to be honest. But also we, we definitely didn't make the mistake of asking Captain Sensible to write the tune. In fact, me and Richard did another tune and we made another video. Uh, and we managed to find, uh, uh, Richard had a friend who was a, a girl who sung, a very nice voice, and uh, she was uh, good fun as well, and she joined him with the videos with us. So Jackie, who sung in quite a few of our games, came along. Again, I think in those times when 90% of the game players were men in t-shirts at home in their bedrooms, having a girl was a really good thing. So um, can we run the next video, please?
So this is a really fun way. If you can see the team are enjoying it, you know, we're having fun. More people are enjoy joining our team and then joining in with the videos. So this was a, a really cool thing um, to have. And then we kept on going. One second, please. Guys, how long is your, how long is your photo shoot going on for? Guys, please. Thank you. Right, sorry, I'm being naughty, being a, suddenly a director. Okay, so if we can go to the next, the next one, please. Okay, so now we're rattling through the games. You're starting to get to sequels, see? We didn't used to make sequels, but now you've had Sensible Soccer, then Swast, Cannon Fodder, and then Cannon Fodder 2. And we're on the same theme, but myself and Richard were trying to get a little bit more edgy and creative with the music. I'm not sure if this song is good or bad, but we're playing it tonight, so come and listen. Can we have the next video, please? So that's it, the end of thank you. Myself and Barna, this was here two years ago, the, the after party two years ago that was from, we had some fun. And I gotta say, you guys are the best audience I've ever played in front of, so please come again and do the same again. Um, so the next video, let's go on. So here we are, we're still on our roll. As Sensible Software, we're now kind of milking things a bit too much. And our games are starting to get a little bit, Cannon of Fodder 2 wasn't my favorite game, I'll be honest. It wasn't as good as Cannon of Fodder. And this game, Sensible Golf, to me, is nowhere near as good as the previous games. It just about got across the line. But actually, the tune for it was really, really good. So not many people have seen this video. In fact, it was lost. And uh, I didn't think I would ever see it again. And then uh, Stu Cambridge is one of our lead artists. Uh, I told him I was making this video and he said, oh, I've got the golf video in my house somewhere and he dug it up and we managed to put it in this presentation, which is great. He lives around the corner from Anthony, which was handy. So let's play it. Do you want to play golf? Okay, let's go. So um, the interesting thing about that video is that we'd started to emulate in particular one real live British act, which is Madness. So Madness would make these quirky videos for their songs, if anyone remembers them at the time. This video is actually directed by Chaz Smash, who was uh, Madness's trumpet player. So I think someone in our team had got hold or contact with, with them, and we actually ended up getting them directing our video, which was quite strange. Um, but this was kind of, we're coming towards the end of this era. We've kind of milked this cow as far as it would go. It's given me some good material for tonight and other gigs. Uh, but let's move forward to the next thing, please. So now we have Sensible Soccer 2008. By this time, the wheels are falling off a little bit insensible because our 3D was not very good. Our business was good, but our 3D was bad. So, um, but we can show you the tune from this. And again, this is the very last video we made. It's basically me and three other guys messing around in town and acting like football hooligans. Not really hooligans. Play.
That's a short text. These are all three minute videos, basically, but we can't cram them into this little speech. So it's interesting because the song was going more for a different kind of style, slightly more anthemic. And you can actually see Dear Richard Joseph, unfortunately, he's not with us and hasn't been for quite a few years, but he was so photogenic. The camera kind of loves him whenever he stands in there. It's what I noticed most of all about the videos. So this was the end of the sensible era in our small leafy town in Essex, where I come from. And uh, things changed. But we were making one other game. Can we go to the next lot, please? A game infamous that unfortunately never made it out. It kind of died for technical reasons mostly. However, myself and Richard had really found an excuse to make some amazing music. Uh, what we did end up from this game was not a game, but we had a 52 minute, 32 track album of music and speech and sound effects telling a whole story. And we actually made a lot of the videos uh, for the game, like full three minute videos to go with each song. So what you're gonna see here is the vision of sex, drugs and rock and roll. Um, it's, I think this one's quite long from, from memory, but you're going to see the idea of this, like, forgive the early 3D graphics, okay? You can look at it now and go, my God, what's that? It's very stylized, but you get the image we had of this, th this virtual band that, that we wanted to create that could then make albums and stuff as well as games. So if we can run with Sex, Drugs and Rock and Roll, please. New from Sensible Software, an incredible interactive adventure. Can you get any of this? Absolutely. Wow. Big hits. How big did he say? About 10 inches. Big twists. Hooray, hooray, we got sweaties. And big tips. Oh. Follow Bob. Did you bring any care, Nige? Sure. Sniff. Nice Doggy. My mum likes it. Titty. Yeah. I did warn you. And Michael. Oh, snap out of it. Oh, we're all going to die. Join them in their incredible adventures as they sell their souls. Don't let me down. No problem. For sex. <laughs> oh, yeah. Drugs. And rock and roll. As you can see, it was a fairly racy game. So, um, 
this is pre-GTA. We started making this game in 1994, and we actually finally stopped developing it in 1997, I think it was. So we were actually quite a way ahead of our time in an industry that didn't quite want to go there and with uh, programmers that sadly couldn't um, finish the job. You know, sometimes I look at this and it makes me sad. I spent four years working on this game and it didn't come out. I wrote one and a half thousand page script for this game that did not come out. So it can be quite sad sometimes in game development. But what we got out of it is some great music, which we can again play tonight. But what I guess people who don't work in game development don't appreciate is the amount of work people do that doesn't find its way to you. You don't see it, we can it. Games that didn't happen or things we started working on that went. Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll is an entire game of this, but me and Richard had great fun. Like every once a week I would drive to his studio and it was like music day. He had a studio in Pinewood Studios. We spent the whole day just making music, which was fantastic. So I love this experience. Next. Okay, so I think this is, is this the final video? Is this the final video or are there more? Is this the we final are video? Press play and tape. We are the okay. geekiest band in Watch the whole this. wide world. This is the combination we are going to be of the band live that plays and computer games games tunes together. on game controllers. So that's actually kind of for the played on game controllers, like the drums with the dance mat and the, the keyboards with the Donkey Kongas and stuff. So this is a fantastic surprise set up for me by a band called Press Play on Tape that we sometimes share like the stage with and do gigs with together with Sid 80s. And it was a surprise. They had all these controllers set up and said, John, we want you to play this one that goes with the gun and uh, just stand there, which was to me is a really fantastic way of summing up the geekiness of retro games and music at the same time. This was a lovely gig in Copenhagen. Um, this has been the end of this talk. Uh, do, we have some, do we have any tickets? Do we know? If you want to come to the after party, does anyone want to come to the after party that's not got a ticket yet? Okay. Um, if you can see this man here, can I put it on you? Yes, you here. Uh, where's Miko? Is he here? No. If you see this man here about getting a ticket, you can buy one. It's not just us. There's three or four other acts playing tonight, so please do come along. I think it's 40s Lotties. Is that right? I have no idea. Oh, you don't know? Okay. I thought someone else was going to be here. But anyway, come along, guys, and, and I hope you've enjoyed the talk, and I hope you see with us tonight how we, again, put games music and bring it live onto a stage to you. Thank you for being a great audience and listening, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Thanks, John. Thank you.